Hello, and welcome to Menger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will discuss how to configure the SMRT relay test set for proper communications. Now let's get started. The SMRT can communicate via serial over USB, Ethernet, or serial over Bluetooth if Bluetooth was purchased. Bluetooth is not enabled on the test set currently available. Bluetooth will not be discussed in this presentation. Serial over USB. Note that this is a USB Type B port. There is an RS-232 chip embedded in the test set. When you plug a USB cable into this port, it will set up a new COM port on your computer. Use Device Manager to discover the COM port number and begin communication. Ethernet. Note that there are three Ethernet ports on the SMRT. If only one cable is being used, it should be plugged into the OUT PC port. The OUT port is used to daisy chain to another input to a second test set to daisy chain additional amplifiers. There's also the STVI port. This port provides power over Ethernet to provide power for the STVI or Smart Touch View interface. Most computers today are configured for automatic Ethernet addressing. If a computer is configured for automatic addressing and it is plugged into a live network which does not have an address server, then the computer assumes an address in the range of the automatic private IP addressing range. The default address in the SMRT is in the automatic private addressing range, which is 169.254.something.something. .something. Most computers do not require configuration changes to the Ethernet port. I will now demonstrate connecting to an SMRT first with serial and then with Ethernet. I'm opening PowerDB Lite with the RTMS icon so it goes directly to the RTMS. I'm going to start with serial so I will take out the check mark, pull down the list of COM ports and I know that these are not my COM port numbers. That's because I've not yet plugged in my serial cable which I will do now. Okay I have just plugged in my serial cable. COM port numbers haven't changed but when I click refresh I see a new number has appeared. Now I will connect. Serial is just a little bit slower than Ethernet, but not too much. And now it's loading. And now you can see we are connected by serial as indicated by the green icon. If it were yellow, we would be in simulation mode. Now I will close PowerDB and reconnect for Ethernet. Okay, I've reconnected by Ethernet, so I'm going to reopen RTMS from the RTMS icon. By doing this, it saves the step of selecting the instrument. Select Ethernet and connect. This is the unit I'm currently communicating with. Select it. And we are connected, as you can see once again, by the green icon. It would be yellow if we were in simulate mode. So now a couple of pointers about what to do if you are unable to connect by Ethernet. We'll start off by using a command prompt. In the command prompt, I typed in the command ipconfig, all one word, capitals do not matter, I just thought it would be easier to see. When you press the enter key, you see your configuration. You can see this is my wireless connection, so it is not the information I'm looking for. We'll just need to scroll up a little bit. And now you see the 169.254 address range. 
Recall this is the address range that Windows uses for default addresses when it is not connected to an address server. Also recall this is in the same range the SMRT uses by default. If you are in this address range and you are unable to connect, you will need to contact your IT help desk for help configuring your firewall. Another approach is to use your Windows Ethernet configuration. Choose Ethernet from here and then change adapter settings. Choose the active wired port. You can see your IP address right here very easily. What you really need to do is see the properties of your Ethernet port. Select Properties, then select Internet Protocol Version 4, and then select Properties. And you can see that I am selected to obtain an IP address automatically and obtain a DNS server address automatically. If you have static addresses in these fields, then you will need to contact your IT help desk for assistance in changing the IP address or you may temporarily connect by serial and change the address of the SMRT. Now we'll take a look at how to change the IP address of the SMRT. Close everything out in this page and then navigate to the configuration of the SMRT. This is the Ethernet configuration section. Notice the HCP is selected. If you click this button, the IP address will be exposed. You may type in a static address compatible with your computer. However, keep in mind that it may make it more difficult for the next person to connect to this unit. If you are using static IP address, Proceed to accept changes. You will receive messages warning you that the Ethernet configuration is being changed. Accept those messages also and the SMRT will restart. I'm going to go back into DHCP mode for now. If the static IP address has been forgotten or another user tries to connect and is unaware of the static address, the easiest solution is to temporarily connect by serial, go into the configuration, and re-enable DHCP. This concludes the discussion on how to configure communications for the SMRT relay test set. Visit the MEGA YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews, and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.